Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Hey, today I'm in Iron Pryor, Ontario, catching up with Paul Sullivan of Sullivan Agro. Paul, how's it going? It's going well, Bernard. Hey, it's great to be out here. I'm, it's always wonderful to get out in eastern Ontario, and I want to stop in and talk to you about SWAT maps. Um, it's a you know it's a management program that more and more growers and agronomists like you are turning to to help manage corn and soybeans. Tell us about the program and why you made the leap. First year this year, right? Yeah, we started mapping last fall, but we started to use the maps in 2022 as far as managing inputs with SWAT. So SWAT is soil, water, and topography. Three very key uh, pillars of crop production. And this model was developed in Western Canada, but has been applied to many different agronomy uh, programs a lot, uh, across, uh, basically across uh, the world. Mm. So the, the concept is that it <clears throat> breaks the field into 10 uh, particular management zones uh, that go from 1 to 10, 1 being uh, 1 and 2 being the drier areas, 9 and 10 being the damper water collecting areas. And every particular field that has a SWAT map developed for it has this 1 to 10 uh, zones that, it, that exist in the, the map for the field. So talk about, I guess, how you take those zones then, Paul, and, and, and apply a management strategy. I mean, you're trying to optimize production in all those zones, right? That's right, we are. We're uh, defining the variability of the soil and water to be able to uh, put inputs in that reflect the really the productivity potential of that part of the field. A higher drier area like this red here generally will not produce as well as an area where we have more water available through the growing season. And even in Ontario where we typically have too much water, there are periods where it's, it's very dry. This particular site was very dry through June, late June into July. And what we were trying to do with a map like this is to reduce the impact of that water stress. Uh, in this case, it's dry, um, but uh, we, we can get into wet years where the water, uh, excess water, can cause some challenges with the nitrogen cycle, mm. with uh, tillage, things, things along that lines. Yeah. So you've got water, you know, you've got soil, you've got topography. Talk about, I guess, maybe now you're going to build some scripts and maybe do some variable rate application, seed and nitrogen. Talk about how the philosophy will change from zone one and two down to nine and ten. So the SWAT map is showing some differences uh, on the soil texture and water supplying capacity. The reds, the high dry areas, lower organic matter, do not have the holding capacity that the lower areas in the field where the water flows and collects. And that impacts how we put our inputs in place. So I break the 10 into three distinct areas. The one and two is water limiting, mm -hmm. the nines and tens water excess, and then the five, six, seven, eight, I call the sweet soil, which is the most productive, the most consistent part of the field year in, year out. You will typically always have the highest yield in those parts of the field. That's where you want to put the groceries for the field. Okay, Paul, we've talked about the theoretical approach with swap maps. We're gonna go real here right now. Um, you've got a swap map right here of this field. We're at McGregor Produce. And uh, it's, a, it's a field that you've applied the SWAT map to for the first year. Tell us about what you've done. Okay, so this particular field was SWAT mapped last fall after wheat harvest. Uh, so we mapped it, we pulled soil samples. Then in the fall, after we got the results back, 
It needed some pH adjustment. We applied lime according to the areas that needed lime. It also had some requirements for some phosphorus, so we varied the phosphorus application last fall, and then there was a cover crop growing on it. 2022, the spring, uh, farm has capability to variably plant, so we have uh, variable planting uh, script here from 28,000 to 36,000 mm -hmm. that's been planted across this particular field that's here. Uh, then at side dressing time, we put down a base level of nitrogen. Uh, we did some PSNT tests. We have a different uh, population establishment in the field, different nitrogen levels in the field. We overlaid that together to be able to uh, side dress UAN from 11 to 22 gallons per acre. Paul, let's talk about what we're seeing in season now as the swap map plays out throughout the year. You've gone in here a little, little uh, not so long ago, back in July, and pulled out plants from each of these zones. Tell us what we're seeing. So, very interesting. We see the plants are very short on the one and two areas where water has been limited all year round for this particular field, other than right after emergence. We've got shorter plants, not as big plants, um, very uh, limited size to it. As we get into the threes and fours and fives and sixes, the plants actually have more height to them and they're looking bigger, more robust, more plant health to them. They haven't been limited as much. When we get to the 9-10 area, we see the short plants shorten up because there has been some holdback on those plants uh, and that is uh, uh, the way that the growth has been influenced by the weather conditions um, in 2022 on the farm here. Paul, on July 27th, you actually, you know, pulled ears and did some counts, uh, you know, from, from the length of these cobs, rows around. Tell us what you found. So we went to the different SWAT zones. We uh, pulled cobs from those zones and as the illustration shows, the different yield components that we could see at the time, we, 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 we documented them. And um, so the rounds are the same for all zones except the nine and tens. And the nine tens uh, had some challenging early growth period where the roots couldn't get out and develop as well. So that reduced the number of rounds from 16 to to 14. The growing conditions then from the knee-high corn to, to tassel when length is determined were quite um, reasonable. Uh, we can see that the length of kernel per cob is, is reasonably consistent. The population management that we imposed in this particular field, um, we, we planted from 28 to 36. The emergence was was right with what was planted. So you see the different population levels across the zones. And then if we work through the math for the estimated bushels per acre, this is a, at this time for, uh, to, the, uh, to the end of July, the yield potential for this particular uh, field based on 90,000 kernels per bushel. Some awesome research, some great numbers right out of this field here on your first SWAT map. Talk to me about the impact you've had on this field here. Obviously, you know, you've, you've, you've made some management decisions here and you look to be managing to the individual potential of those zones. Absolutely, Bern. This is a field with different soil types that we've been able to quantify that. We've changed the population across the field to have a, an, an optimum population that's there and then we've been able to work through the season with variable rate nitrogen to make sure that it's uh, not short on nitrogen. And as we move ahead until this corn finishes, we have corn that has an appropriate amount of inputs, basically optimizing inputs to be able to maximize uh, the profitability for, for as much of this field as we can. Now, first year, swap maps. Talk to me about your business as an agronomist and your customers. Where does this fit in the future? Are you going to be doing more of this and why? We're absolutely going to be doing more of this. This is an agronomist tool. Apply fundamental agronomy 
to the variation and productivity potential that's across uh, every farm. And uh, it's something that is a concept that comfortable very farmers are very comfortable with they can understand the map and that's important to be able to uh, keep uh, inputs changing depending on the field itself and and the season that presents it to us awesome well paul hey great insights on the swap maps thank you for taking the time great to have you on the corn field thanks very much glad to be here